I tried Linux once, but it wasn't very user friendly. I could not find the drivers for my graphics card. When I opened a Word document, the layout was broken. Oh, I don't have time to learn a new operating system. Linux doesn't support Adobe products. I need them. These are some of the common arguments I get from my friends. Basically, what they are saying is they have given a shot to Linux, but it didn't go well. In this video, I will discuss the most common pain points of those who are new to Linux. We are going to dissect which ones are genuine issues and which ones are just misconceptions or myths. I am a Linux user from the past 12 years. I promise that I will try my best to be totally unbiased. Let's start with the number one argument that is Linux is not user friendly. Now we have to decide what exactly do you mean by user friendly. The term itself is vague and subjective. I'm not gonna lie. I know where this is coming from. I'll say two things, muscle memory and subconscious habits. If you have been using Windows from the beginning of the time, like from the Big Bang, and then you switch to Linux and suddenly things look different and feel different, the shutdown button which you could click without even thinking in Windows has to be looked for now. It needs more cognitive effort for the first few days. You could be using a new screenshot tool or a new PDF reader or you could be using Pinta instead of Paint, which means slightly more cognitive effort, at least for the first few days. And this leads you to think Linux is not user friendly. But do you see what is actually happening here? Your subconscious habits are changing. So let's not say Linux is not user friendly. The better sentence would be old habits die hard. So I would rate this argument 5% genuine. 95% misconception. The second argument is about hardware compatibility. This can be a genuine issue sometimes. While this is usually not an issue with the mainstream hardware devices from Intel and AMD, some other vendors may not support Linux. That is true. Personally, I have not faced any hardware compatibility issue even after installing Linux on 15 plus devices in 12 years of my journey with Linux. But I have seen online forums filled with those issues. So I know this is a valid argument in some cases. Historically, most of those issues have come from Nvidia's graphics cards. However, in 2025, the relationship between Linux and Nvidia has improved a lot. In 2012, Linus, the creator of Linux, showed a special finger to NVIDIA because he was frustrated with their uncooperative attitude towards Linux. His special finger did a great service to the Linux community. NVIDIA gradually improved their support for Linux and even open sourced their kernel modules in 2022. Another company that has not well supported Linux in the past is Broadcom. They have manufactured Wi-Fi chipsets and network cards with drivers which were proprietary and closed. Due to this reason, some users have suffered in the past. They had to manually install firmware and manually load modules. It is true. However, today in 2025, Broadcom's support for Linux has improved a lot and they have even open sourced Linux drivers for some of the newer Wi-Fi chipsets. I am rating this argument as 20% genuine and 80% misconception. By the way, something to praise about the Linux developers is despite the lack of support from the vendors, they have managed to reverse engineer many projects. Countless times they have added support for Linux by reverse engineering the drivers for Windows and Mac. Another common argument is lack of applications. This one is also a misconception most of the time. Let's dissect this one. Switching to LibreOffice from Microsoft Office is not hard, period. Unless you have very, 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 very specific requirements, you can easily do everything on LibreOffice that you do on Microsoft Office. If you want a similar interface, you can just set the tabbed style and it already looks like Microsoft Word to a large extent. 
You can do the same for Kelsey spreadsheets and impress presentation. You know what? Things are not hard and features are not missing in LibreOffice. The thing is, it is slightly different. Give it some time and it becomes a second nature. Okay, fine. The Adobe products do not work on Linux. That is true. Two things on this. One, alternatives are available. Two, it's a decision from Adobe's side, not really a limitation of Linux. Okay, I know it doesn't make a difference whose fault it is. Just saying so you know that it's not like Linux is not supporting Adobe's products. It's Adobe who thinks nearly 100 million Linux users are not important for them. Adobe already compiles and packages their software for Mac, which is also Unix based. It wouldn't be hard for them to do the same for Linux, but they decided not to do it for Linux. Coming to the alternatives, Photoshop alternative GIMP is enough for most users. I won't say it's a complete replacement of Photoshop. If you are a professional graphic designer, I can understand you have requirements that are not fulfilled by GIMP, Krita, Inkscape and other Linux alternatives. But in most cases, switching to these alternatives is not an issue. The only issue is a little discomfort for a few days till you get used to it. For Premiere Pro, you have many alternatives. My favorites are KDN Live and OpenShot. There are many others too. Again, for 95% of users, KDN Live is more than enough. There are many such cases. I can't talk about all applications and their alternatives in a single video, but you get the idea. The same logic that I gave about the user-friendly argument applies here also. So the lack of applications argument is only 15% genuine. The remaining 85% of the complaints about lack of applications are just misconceptions and examples of old habits dying hard. And on top of that, we spend most of the time on web browser nowadays. Inside browser, there is no difference at all. The browser based applications do not care what operating system you are using. The fourth argument is having to learn a new operating system. Okay, before saying anything on this, let me show you this comment I saw on one of the YouTube videos. This guy is 57 and he switched to Linux from Windows. I don't know he or she switched to Linux from Windows. Isn't that cool? And the people who tell me they don't want to learn a new operating system, they are in their 30s. First of all, I don't think there is much to learn. You already know how to click an icon to start an application. This is what you do in all operating systems. The only thing is the icons and their placements have changed. You also know how to right click and see more options. This is similar across all operating systems. Yes, I agree. There are a few things to learn. For example, the new file system, configuration, settings and a few other things but even they are very similar to windows yes the names have changed but they provide very similar functionality with some changes in the interface it hardly takes a week to get comfortable with the things that you need the most so i would rate this one as 10 percent genuine and 90 percent misconception one more argument related to this one is the need to learn command line or the terminal Yes, it is true that if you know how to use the terminal and learn a few commands, you become a power user and you get a plethora of benefits. But that doesn't mean you can't depend on Linux for your regular use without terminal. I recently created a video on Windows to Jorin OS migration and I did almost everything a regular user would do without touching the terminal at all. I am putting the link in the description, you can go and watch it. Lastly, I would say even if some issue comes up and you are not able to solve it, the maximum you lose is one day of the weekend. If it works, what you gain is privacy and freedom. Freedom to customize your system like you want. Freedom from the big corporate controlling your hardware, owning your hardware. 